Hi, everyone. Um, welcome again to the episode number 10 of the Iraika Talks. Um, we have a special episode today because we have, uh, as you see here, uh, four guests, which is um, very important for us. Um, they are part of the medical team, the medical staff of Essential Health. Um, it's um, Essential Health. They're going to, of course, explain and, and, and talk about the, um, this beautiful center. Um, in, in, in the next uh, minutes, but uh, it's a medical institution uh, focusing on functional and integrative medicine. So um, I'm going to just present them, uh, introduce like a little bit, and then they're going to uh, introduce ourselves um, in, in the next um, uh, question that they have for them for the interview. So Dr. James uh, Stevens is here with us. Uh, there you go. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Elizabeth uh, uh She's there. Very good. Um, also, Dr. Kyle O'Brien is there. There you go. Thank you so much. And Dr. Uh, Tonya Kramer. They, they are very good. They are our, um, I mean, the staff of essential health. And I'm going to ask you guys if you can introduce yourself. And also, um, after that, tell us about the, your medical career, a brief, you know, um, a summary of your medical career and how you met and, and, and connected in essential health. Okay. Want me to start? Absolutely. I think you need to. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm James Stevens. I'm Dr. Stevens. And uh, Essential Health is uh, our baby, right? But I founded it 14 years ago. I've been in practice in primary care for 33 years. Um, I've trained in sports medicine and then in functional medicine, stem cell medicine, uh, hyperbarics, um, et cetera, et cetera. And Essential Health was uh, the baby that I always wanted to create, and uh, these wonderful colleagues of mine have uh, have joined me in the charge, and uh, they'll explain uh, their place as well. But uh, that's me. So it's a family. Essential Health is it's a family, basically. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So the next one, I don't know, Dr. Elizabeth, can you tell us a little bit also? Sure. Um, I came next. So uh, five years ago, <laughs> it, was, it was perfect. I finished residency out west and um, worked at locums for a little while, but knew that I wanted to pull a bigger toolbox together. And when a job came up with Essential Health in 2017, I jumped on it. It was the dream that I thought I would have to take 20 years to build. And I've gotten to build it here alongside Dr. J, which has been um a blessing. And I, uh, during that time, finished a fellowship in both integrative medicine with Andrew Wiles Center and that board certification, and then a functional full fellowship with A4M and that board certification. So it's been busy, um, in addition to having a couple of kids and keeping the clinic glowing uh, up in North Raleigh. So it's, it's, um, it's been a time of tremendous growth and getting to build the project together to vet the initial dream and then make it more refined and more professional and more replicable for other clinics, other providers, which has led to our family growing. Great, great. Uh, and then the uh, next one, yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is Kyle Bryan. Kyle, um, yeah. I'm, I'm new to the team here, along with Dr. Kramer. Mm -hmm. I'm also earliest in my medical career, I think by quite a bit. So I just finished up my family medicine training uh, up north at the Cleveland Clinic and did some integrative and functional training as well. So I've been with Central Health for a couple of months now. Kind of a funny story how I ended up joining the team, but I think similar to you is I had always dreamed of a way to practice medicine and I didn't know anyone was doing it yet. Uh, and then I found a Central Health and realized that they were doing it even better than I had dreamed of. And so once I found them, I just, I had to be part of the team and here I am, couldn't yeah. be happier, so. Great. And the last child. <laughs> <laughs> the last one. So um, let's see, I, I started out actually my career in plastic surgery, and um, I found myself becoming very disheartened because I was doing things like limb amputations on diabetics, and I was watching, uh, having to do resections of lungs and uh, organ transplants, and um, a, plastic surgery, of course, we get into a lot of wound care, and we get into um, post-cancer uh, remediations of um, the sections of the body, and I was so sad 
because um, I felt that we were too late to the game. We we just were mm. failing our patients, and that um, was really wearing on me. And so I started looking for ways to get further upstream to actually treat the disease and to create um, processes of uh, addressing the root of illness versus the management of illness. And as a result, I ended up changing my residency. I ended up changed, going into different fellowships. I ended up quadruple board certified just as I'm doing this search. And as part of this, somehow magic happened and <laughs> like um, essential health was looking for someone. And it's like, oh, oh, I, I, I'm your person. I'm the person you're looking for. <laughs> so, absolutely right. <laughs> the so um, you guys, I see that you have, I mean, of course, one of, I mean, that they, some of you have more years of experience, of course, and different, um, um, you know, uh, training, let's say, but you have, uh, you, you made you guys in a specific uh, thing, which is the concept of integrative um, medicine. I mean, the, this, this approach that you have, not only in essential care and essential um, uh, clinic, and also you as a professional. So, um, if if I could ask you, um, where does the, this interactive concept uh, of care come from, and and how do you manage uh, to link all the services you have? Because I checked your website, you have very amazing services and programs that you that you offer. So how do you uh, link all those services? Well, I'll take a shot first uh, because Tanya really, Dr. Kramer just addressed it. Um, I've been in primary care sports medicine for so many years, but it was always either acute care or disease management. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that we're sitting here today because it was hyperbarics years ago for me, 14 years ago, that I was interested in because I manage a lot of concussions in the professional world, in the college and high school world. And as I began to dig into hyperbarics and become convinced that there was this amazing modality that nobody around me wanted to pay any attention to, I ultimately fell into functional integrative concepts and then fellowship training. And I had to leave conventional primary mm -hmm. care to create essential and then began the process of linking programs, addressing various parts of root cause together. Um, and I think Elizabeth will address the integrative part was always the whole person and how it impacts um, not just them, but the rest of their lives, both inside their family and out. And maybe I'll stop there. And... Yeah, so you just mentioned something very, very important. Um, I mean, of course you mentioned hyperbaric, which is um, uh, one of the, the factors of this interview, but, um, the whole person. So, as you know, the the, the hyperbody oxygen therapy um, has this uh, novel benefit, which is that um, the, the hyperoxia, which is uh, in general a systemic benefit that you get. Um, it doesn't matter uh, for for any specific situation. You get the hyperoxia and you get the benefit from from that. So, send this. Um, and and of course, what what your doctor just just explained regarding your program. How do you um, plan to incorporate the hyperbody oxygen therapy in, in this program? And if uh, some of you, I don't know, uh, the other doctors um, already uh, started, how are the protocols so far? I would like to touch first on hyperbarics as part of linking everything together. And then I'd love to defer to my colleagues for how we're introducing and which patients are okay. To pull that back to the whole person. Um, mm -hmm. Integrative and functional medicine by themselves are at risk of continuing to behave the way conventional medicine behaves. We can still look at a person and give them a diagnosis and give them a treatment. That's still allopathic medicine. So what we do at Essential Health is, is our niche, is the lens through which we view everything that we do and where we vet new products, including something like hyperbaric oxygen therapy is, is it going to address more than a symptom for a patient. Is it another Band-Aid? Right, right. Them inside out? Are we empowering them for regenerative therapy to help defend against aging, uh, not only to heal disease? We really want mm. our people to get from disease to well, all the way on up to optimal. As far as down that road as they're willing to go, we're going to ride it with them. Um, mm. so hyperbaric oxygen therapy has fit in beautifully well with 
our concept of care and wellness for people. Um, right, do you, right. Yeah, want to tackle some? Oh. So, but in terms of like specifics, like I think um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy fits into a lot of our programs because we're looking for the root of disease. So if you're looking for the root of disease and you're moving people forward on a continuum to anti-aging, then we're looking at like, how does um, the, the chamber actually function, not just to heal joint uh, issues or to um, restore um, concussion or neurological concerns, how mm. does it actually then optimize the person going forward? How do we prevent um, and improve cognitive parameters? So we're doing mm. um, thinking of moving in on Alzheimer's or moving in on um, uh, other like um, cognitive issues that a person might have so that we're optimizing them, not just physically um, so that they can repair a condition or be restored from a condition, but that they are actually um, able to clear out um, whatever toxins there are in their body that are causing slowdown in an area and so that they are fully restored then to go forward. And yeah, to right. And that, that's that's um, basically you just answered one of the of my my next question, which is specifically uh, if you if you guys uh, can tell us the application that you see or the role of the ox hyperbaric oxygen and specific uh, um, um, therapeutical approaches or therapeutical areas. Um, for sure, we we uh, agree that this is a magnificent because it's not only um, you know the. Um, uh, the scope of the of the uh, of the therapy per se is also um, because it's non-invasive treatment, which is much better, right? So um, you just mentioned anti-aging effect, which is one of my next question was. But um, if you if you can, one of you can answer me really quick. Um, how do you see the role of the uh, hyperbaric oxygen in the you know metabolic regulation and in general? And uh, cellular um, uh, regeneration, of course. How do you see the the, the benefit there? Yeah, absolutely. I'll take that one. Um, yeah, I think hyperbarics are really cool in a lot of ways because it's kind of multimodal. And to address your specific question, we have a lot of patients coming in, sure, who have chronic illness, chronic fatigue, or long COVID. Um, and I think the more we're learning about many of these chronic conditions is that there's an underlying cellular derangement and probably has a lot to do with mitochondrial dysfunction. And so a lot of our, our therapies now are aimed at how do we optimize the mitochondria through, through exercise or through hyperbarics, you know, forcing oxygen into the cells so the mitochondria mm -hmm. use it and perform effectively or through IV therapies. And so it's just a perfect tool that we now have in our toolbox to help those people. Um, but it's also cool too, because we have just the people who feel well and we're trying to mm -hmm. promote and they want every tool that they can get to live longer and live better. And so hyperbaric is perfect there. And then, you know, like just today, I saw someone with an acute shoulder pain and we got them in on the hyperbaric chamber. And so you can use it for conventional aspects of primary care for acute stuff or for these more chronic issues that no one's been able to figure out. Like hyperbaric is safe and it works well. So I think we're excited about that across the board. Absolutely. We've had yeah. some really yeah. interesting, some interesting cases too. I've had somebody in with chronic anemia who can't get blood transfusions. I've had post head and neck radiation um, to help prevent the jaw necrosis. We've had Crohn's colitis. We've had post-surgical, just had a, an ankle fixation and we get them in there. We get the cognitive, I'm a little foggy. What can I do to get better? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say if we start from the top <laughs> and come down, we can list it all. So <laughs> one of the things that we say very often here is the, the three C's that drive mm -hmm. people to clinics are cognitive decline, cancer, and cardiac. Yep. All three have an application within an HBOT when it's done yep. appropriately or done with, as, as Kyle was saying, the other modalities that we have. And it's the blending of these modalities. Uh, but I think when we come to cellular medicine, there's what well, mitochondrial energy is life itself. Mm. And aging is the loss of mitochondrial function, period. Um, and so anything that's restoring that in some capacity is moving somebody back towards, and we have a lot of motivated patients that are, you know, generally well, <clears throat> but they understand the concept of 
where this anti-aging, if I use that word loosely, comes from. But when we get into Alzheimer's and somebody comes out and they're more talkative or mild cognitive, I've done ADD. I mean, I could sit here mm. for minutes and tell you a, 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 an autism story that wow. would, would put tears in your eyes, uh, uh, having been called to the medical board uh, many years ago and having to explain what was going on with autistic children and, and hyperbaric oxygen, mm -hmm. right? Um, For sure, it's, it's very, very, very interesting. And um, actually, I, 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 I must highlight something uh, of this talk, which is how, the way that you focus not in the in the disease, not in the in the in the individual that like uh, sick individual that you uh, focus on the real the whole person, which is for me one of the best um, thing that I that I heard in in, in this in this chat. Um, well, this is like the the common last question that we always have. Actually, if you check the our last episodes, you will find it. But in this specific case, because it's a special episode, as I said. Um, we usually ask for one word to describe the HBR, but in this case, I'm going to ask you for um, words. So let's start um, from uh, Dr. Tonia. If you oh. if you uh, if you have to define mm -hmm. the HBR in one word, which um, would will be um, improvement and longevity. So longevity. Good. Thank you, uh, Dr. James. It's your turn. I would say rejuvenating great like it uh dr um elizabeth i will not pass up the opportunity to say essential <laughs> uh, you i think uh, you were yeah, yeah was, that, that was smart <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, kyle it is wonderful yeah. vitality i think that's great i like that i like both i uh, actually um all, all of them well guys um i mean I don't, I don't have any more to say that thank you so much for your time for this. It was yeah. a real pleasure. It's a honor for you, uh, for me having you uh, for here. Um, uh, just, I, I know you just started. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say one thing to you? <laughs> yeah, of course. We want to deliver this message to you. We have inside of Essential what we call Essential University mm -hmm. and our commitment to excellence. Uh, so we always look for evidence-based and we look for the best in class. And so our thank you back to you is with Lindsay and what we've decided for years came to pass when we found FDA approval, European approval, the science has evolved as you know, uh, amazingly. So we fulfill all of our charge to ourselves in essential right, to, to be the best that we can be. And and you're really uh, we thank you because you you deliver that for us. No, please, ma thank you so much. I I'll take the, the this words and I'm sure it's with all my team because it's not only me. We have like a lot of people working. But actually, if you can see, uh, you cannot see the back back uh, uh, of the uh, backstage. But uh, <laughs> there are a lot of people working for this, and this is a lot of um, um, grateful for us. So thank you so much for your words. So um, thank you guys. Uh, thank you again, Dr. James, Dr. Elizabeth, uh, Dr. Kyle, and Dr. Tonya for your time. Uh, and you guys, thank you for um, being here, for uh, seeing our episode that we have by Berica Talks, and let's see us in the next episode. Thank you so much, and see you there. Bye-bye.